Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. This morning I'm looking at a book which has come to us from the uh, Boydell Press and it's suitable to review it at the end of our celebration for Magna Carta. It's called Magna Carta and the England of King John. It's been edited by Janet S. Uh, Lerngard and it has a number of contributors, and I'll mention them by name. Uh, James A. Brundridge, <coughs> um, David Crook, David Crouch, John Gillingham, Barbara A. Hanniwalt, John Hudson, Janet S. Lerngard, James uh, Maschaley, and R. V. Turner. Now, we've reviewed this book. Um, Elizabeth and I talked about the book, and we've reviewed it, and the review has gone to the journals and the web. And for our title for the review, we've given this title, A Modern Appraisal of the Appalling King John and Magna Carta, taken from the Pennsylvania State University Conference held in 2008. So it's a few years earlier, but they look at the behaviour of King John and the reasons why Magna Carta actually uh, uh, turned up as a great charter. This is the book, it's a paperback. It's very, very small. There's the uh, spine, and then <clears throat> there's some comments on the back, which you can see. Now, in the book itself, it runs to 186 pages. There's a short index at the back, and then after that, you've then got the various articles, and I'll be referring to them in a moment. At the front, there's the actual front cover there, bigger version. Then you've got the, the basic blurb here. Uh, and you've also got, it's a hardback and a paperback, this is the paperback. That's the contents section, and it lists all of the, the contributors who have put their essays in <coughs> to cover this. Then there are details about the contributors there. Then there are abbreviations. And then we go straight into the an introduction by Janet. There are, of course, quite a lot of footnotes to assist us and basically to justify assertions and all the other things made. Then after the introduction, we get into the various articles, and you can see that's the very first one. As I say, it's running to 180 odd pages. It's a lovely little book. I, I was really very, very pleased to uh, see this one. There's been a lot on the market uh, during the anniversary year, and I'm recording. I wrote this uh, on and off during 2015, and we're, I'm recording this at the beginning of 2016. And as I say, we're talking about the modern appraisal of what King John did. As an, he was an appalling king. And uh, what, why we then had Magna Carta. And what we say about the book is this. We've now all recovered from those celebrations uh, to remind ourselves um, of uh, Magna Carta. So we celebrated it in 2015. And it was actually the sealing of Magna Carta that we, we actually uh, celebrated. Magna Carta meaning the Great Charter. And it was forced upon one of the worst monarchs England has ever had the misfortune to suffer under. He probably is the worst that we know of. Um, but uh, at least he's a salutary lesson. And an abiding memory of the various events last year were the exuberance of so many supporters revelling in basic rights which were created at Runnymede, and sadly the cynicism of some of our academic community, I have to say, who tended to consider Magna Carta a bit of a joke because of modern parliamentary enactments which they see as far more important. Well, they will have their way, I'm not going to mention them or our rows, but the fact is Magna Carta is there, it's been there all the way through, it's not religious, it's a basic statement about what human beings do. It's as simple as that. And we have to have some very basic rights which are inalienable, and that is what we were given. And it's, it has stood the test of time, notwithstanding attempts to uh, get rid of it and all sorts of other things. It's obviously been amended over the centuries. We suppose that much of the lack of interest that actually has always been in England about this Magna Carta is counterbalanced by the keenness of those overseas countries which have benefited from the contents of Magna Carta, whose rights still ring true in so many jurisdictions today. And thank goodness for those countries where the behaviour of those in charge can often leave a great deal to be desired, 
and where the people need protection, which is what this Great Charter is all about. Janet Langard explains that the genesis of this little paperback was a conference held in Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania State University, in March 28, where she splendidly describes as, which she splendidly describes as, quote, a testament to the vitality of Magna Carta almost 800 years after Runnymede. She goes on to say that Magna Carta marked a watershed in the relations between monarch and subject, and has long been the subject of constitutional and political historical writing. Absolutely, no more so than in 2015 with the celebrations, and it was great because it, it awakened a new interest, I think, in what Magna Carta was and what it is for us today with the rule of law. Now, we feel that this book is an excellent short statement, which has a different focus, uh, posing a number of basic modern questions. Um, what was the social, economic, legal and religious background to the Charter? And what was England like between 1199 and 1215? Good questions, because one can picture the imagery in one's mind, but it's useful to try to put some sort of perspective on it all. It then goes on to the additional subject, no less important, namely how was King John perceived by those who actually knew him? And of course the scholarship from the contributors analyses the attitude of the earlier Anglican rulers and the effect of their reigns on England in the reign of King John. And the editor brings together what she and her colleagues examine as the causes and results of the increasing baronial fear of the king, the managerial revolution of the English church, and the effect of the Eus commune on English common law, all of which is historically and in terms of legal history, I think, fascinating. The nine authors review in helpful detail the burgeoning economy of the early um, 13th century and its effect on English towns. By so doing, they paint a background of discontent over the then massively important issue of the royal forests, which eventually led to a forerunner complementary to the Great Charter, namely the Charter of the Forest, and then the effect of Magna Carta itself on widows and property, and the way the criminal justice process operated before 1215. And do recall, of course, that an awful lot in Magna Carta was rather self-serving for the barons. I think we ought to put that little bit in as well. Lerngard and her colleagues conclude their exploration of this tempestuous time with the first critical and excellent edition of an open letter from John explaining his position in the matter of a man called William de Brewers. Around September 1210, it was taken from the Black Book of the Exchequer text and is examined in the book by David Crouch in one of the um, essays. We have no doubt that this short collection of, of uh, essays in this book sets an impressive standard of research and scholarship at its highest level for historians and general readers, obviously legal historians too, who are interested in, in this famous uh, period in our history and offers much by way of uh, material which will be unknown to many. Let me conclude by saying a big thank you to everybody for producing it in our celebratory year to go with the other Magna Carta titles and texts. It's added to what is a very special part of the history library for many of us and includes our own little legal libraries. There's the book again, little paperback, it's a hardback as well. There's the uh, spine and then the back and you can see the names. And as I said, I mentioned David Crouch, and he actually, his article is right at the end. Uh, this is the, um, the complaint of King John against William de Brewers, which is there. I hope I've pronounced the names correctly. If I haven't, so be it, as they would say. This is the book anyway, just opening it in the middle. This is another one from Crouch, Baronial par uh, Paranoia. Now you see the, the standard, uh, again, there's a lot of footnoting, the standard throughout is a very high academic standard of, of scholarship for this work. Bodell Press are to be congratulated for producing this and other works which I've reviewed. So a big thank you to them as well and everybody involved. It helps immensely, I think, for a better understanding of where we are. So thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>